In this lesson, you should be able to Identify cultural, geographical, and religious influences of Indonesian music Trace out similarities of Indonesian music to Visayan music Reflect on leadership qualities learned from Southeast Asian music You will be guided by the following essential questions. Why is Indonesian music reversed in terms of tonal mood and lyrical meaning? Is Indonesian music related to Philippine music? How? There was a story of an Indian prince named Sotasoma who has no interest in ruling, so he left his kingdom to travel. During his journey, he saw many things. In one episode, there was a clash between religions. A wicked king called Purushada lived on eating the flesh of humans, including his subjects. To help them, Buddha reincarnated in Sutasoma's body. Knowing this intervention, Purushada was greatly offended so he called on Shiva, the Hindu god of destruction to kill Sutasoma. The Buddha and Lord Shiva battled, but both were equally strong. The battle persisted until priests told them to stop fighting because although they look different, the truth is, they are one. Binneka Tungal Ika in diversity, we are one. It's a parable of religious harmony between Buddhism and Hinduism during the 200-year rule of the Majapahit and Srivijaya empires. This stood why Buddhism and Hinduism were often practiced side by side. Binneka Tungal Ika is presently the national motto of Indonesia. We are many, but one. In this episode, we will explore Indonesia and how the 700-year-old cosmopolitan Majapahit and Srivijaya empires dominated these islands, becoming a great influence that built its music and how its rays shined upon the Philippine culture and how its legacy lives on today.
Hinduism places music in a pedestal of respect. Music is often associated with the Nada Brahman or sacred music. Hindu mythology also provides an undoubtful foundational place of music where deities such as Saravasti, Siva, and Krishna, among others, are depicted as musicians. Parallel to this Hinduism concept of sacred music is the role of the body in attaining harmony between nature, breathe, and spirit. All matter, including the body, inhere the properties of Prithvi, Jala, Tehas, Vayu, and Akasha. This can also be seen in Buddhism where it places the body as an important part of nature, made up of the five elements of earth, water, fire, air, and space. Two of the major religions in Indonesia are Hinduism and Buddhism. As described earlier, they are being practiced side by side as a gesture of religious tolerance and unification. This began during the powerful Madhyapahit Empire and extended up to the Sri Vijaya Empire. These major belief systems involving the mind and the spirit form the unique structures of tonal systems in this archipelago. Slendro is one of the commonly used tonal patterns in Indonesia. The use of this melodic scale can be traced back in the islands of Java. It is a five-tone or pentatonic pattern comprises of fundamental tones named after some body parts. In Bali, it is believed that the slendra delivers a sad sound and is usually heard in cremation ceremonies called biliganjur. This ceremony includes a song portraying the soul and its fight with evil to journey into the heavens. Notice that compared to Western concepts of music, the slendro displays a happy and bright sound against a sad or tragic story or narrative. This is a complete contrast with the Pelog scale. Pelog can be found as a heptatonic or six-tone scale or even up to nine-tone scale. The explanation is a variation of the tuning system from one geographical location to another. Although the Pelog scale can reach up to nine tones, it is still grounded in a rough five-tone or pentatonic scale called the Pathet Bem. Pelog in traditional Indonesia means fine or beautiful and is often used in courtly music in both the Majapahit and Sri Vijaya empires. Hmm. 
Although very similar to a minor scale in Western music, it is expected to deliver a meditative state and meant to bring the listener into a deep sense of happiness and spiritual experience. Southeast Asia is one of the most diverse places on the planet. With so many different cultures and religions, all living side by side. The world's largest island state of Indonesia is an archipelago of over 17,000 islands. More than six religions and 300 different ethnic groups. All once unified by the Majapahit Empire. Majapahit religious tolerance facilitated the kingdom of peace for hundreds of years. This religious and ethnic tolerance combined with strategic trade geography laid the building blocks of an empire. The island is a quiet majesty of rice fields and volcanoes. Of the over 130 active volcanoes, it is a dreadful combination of sublime beauty and utter destruction. This impending natural disaster is not bad after all. It provides a positive impact on farming and a blessing to the people. Java is most fertile island in Indonesia and giving the Majapahit Empire massive rice harvests, more than enough to feed the local population and trade to merchants from the Spice Islands who travel to Java with the monsoon winds from June to September. The Majapahit traded rice to spices and these merchants from the Spice Islands sail home when the wind blows the opposite direction after three months. This west wind brings along a new set of merchants who came to Java to trade their porcelain, beads, and textiles. This maritime activity gave birth to a new form of music dedicated to the sea. Pantuns are ethnic poetry and song narratives of the sea. It is less appropriate to associate pantuns to a single country since it is being used in the expanse of Nusantara, meaning the outer islands of the Majapahit Empire or the maritime Southeast Asia which presently includes Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, and the Philippines. Famous pantoons which are still being sung today includes the following folk song examples. These songs in Nusantara possess a strong maritime spirit describing the vessel's voyages and gallant seafarers who can face any situations at sea, such as storms and big waves, and the sacrifices they make to earn a living. An interesting part of these pantun songs are its cheerful melodic quality contrasting its message full of sadness and the despair of separation and isolation. 
Another common characteristic of Nusantara maritime songs are its use of noble messages. One that would remind of the values of Hindu Buddhism principles. It can also be noticed that songs contain some sort of a story. The art of storytelling through a song or a chant in Malay culture has existed since ancient times by a storyteller called Penglepur Lara. Batik refers to the art of dyeing textiles using wax-resist technique and has developed for more than a thousand years. During the Majapahit Empire, the wearing of batik is a status symbol and is considered to be of high arts. Along with music and dance, the creation of batik is considered a way to develop spiritual discipline. One intangible aspect of weaving is the sound of batik making. One name is called Gedok, which was derived from the sound of the loom as women weavers respond to each other. Tenun gedok karena diambil dari suaranya dok dok. Jadi mereka para ibu-ibu mengerjakan ini malam hari. Jadi tetangganya bunyi dok dok tur di sana dok dok tur saut sautan kayak irama musik. Indonesians are collective. Since its earliest history. Indonesians have always been communal and maintains a close-knit community so they can take care of each other. They are firm believers of equality, even in the olden times. The Majapahit Empire's cosmopolitan quality welcomed people of various descents and religions and tolerated the differences of cultures and beliefs. This ideology is uprooted from the Buddhism principle that all living entities are equal. The Slendro and the Pelog are based on an equal temperament and equidistant tuning system. The equal distances between tones became influential to Claude Debussy, who was captivated by the shades of tone colors from the Gamelan Ensemble in the 1889 World Exposition. The whole tone system which is adaptive of the equal distances of Slendro and Pelog became the basis of form in most of his celebrated compositions. Colotomic musical structure is the use of specified instruments to mark off established time intervals. This is a common rhythmic and melodic ground in the Gamelan Ensemble wherein each gong player is given an equal opportunity of playing a particular beat. This has the same idealism as the weaving of batik and in dance form practices to attain higher spiritual experience. It is rare that a gamelan ensemble is owned by a single individual in Indonesia. It is commonly owned by the whole village and temples. As Claude Debussy pointed out, the Javanese gamelan music is as good as the breath of the people. Music making was not learned in formal schools and by music professionals. It was played by villagers and welcomes everyone who wishes to learn it. Music is their way of life. They would take part in music making as they would in planting the fields, harvesting crops, prepare a meal, 
or builds a dwelling. Music making is a natural process of learning, absorbed through osmosis. Answer the following questions by selecting the best answer. Write the letter of your choice in your music journal. The phrase Bineka Tunggal Ika is the national motto of Malaysia. A. True. B. False. Hinduism and Buddhism during the Majapahit Empire was practiced side by side. A. True. B. False. Nada Brahman means sacred music in Old Java. A. True. B. False. Slendro is a bright pentatonic pattern named after body parts. A. True. B. False. Pelog is a sad sounding melodic pattern used to, to attain happiness. A. True. B. False. Batik is an Indonesian art form with the same ideology as music. A. True. B. False. Music in Indonesia has equal distances between tones, which symbolizes social equality. A. True. B. False. Nusantara includes present-day Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, and the Philippines. A. True. B. False. The Visayas derived its name from the Old Kingdom of Sri Vijaya. A. True. B. False. Bineka Tunggal Ika means we are many, but one. A. True. B. False. Answer the following reflection question. Can music from Southeast Asia teach you leadership traits? How?